We begin solving this question by noting that A of T is simply the number of pounds of salt in the tank at a particular time T. We may also choose to interchangeably use A rather than A of T. So just keep in mind that those two would be equivalent. Now to find A of T, we have to make sure that we satisfy this differential equation, which tells us that the rate of change in the amount of salt per unit time is equal to the input rate of salt minus the output rate of salt, or more simply R sub N minus R sub out. We need to come up with expressions for both R sub in and also R sub out. Let's begin with the input rate of salt and we're going to use the given information. Now, it says that brine contains two pounds of salt per gallon, and that is being pumped into the tank. So we have two pounds per gallon of salt being pumped in, and it's being pumped in at a rate of five gallons per minute. Now notice what happens if we multiply the two pounds per gallon by the five gallons per minute. There's a little bit of dimensional analysis at work here. When we multiply, the gallons in the denominator cancels with the gallons in the numerator, and this ends up giving us 10, and dimensionally, the unit is pounds per minute. Now, this makes a lot of sense, because if you go back and look at the differential equation, it was written as dA dt. A was the number of pounds of salt, and t is the time. So it should make sense that we would have, for a rate into the tank, pounds per minute. So, so far so good for the r sub in, but we also need an expression for the r sub out. This one's a little bit trickier because the amount of salt that's coming out of the tank varies as a function of time. In fact, the amount of salt in the tank at a given time would be a pounds and then that has to be divided by the number of gallons in the tank. This tank has a constant volume of 500 gallons. So we will divide A, which is the pounds of salt at a particular time, by the volume, which is 500 gallons. Now we have to multiply that by sort of this output rate of pumping, and the question notes that this solution is pumped out at the same rate. So in other words, we have to multiply by five gallons per minute. Now, once again, notice, dimensionally, the gallons will cancel out. We multiply, and we end up with 5A over 500, and this once again comes out into pounds per minute. Of course, this can and should be reduced. We divide the top and bottom by 5, and we end up with A over 100, and that is measured in, again, pounds per minute. So we have the input rate and the output rate Let's just go ahead and combine them into the final differential equation. So we have dA dt is equal to the input rate, which we'll just drop the dimensions for, so 10, minus the output rate, which is A over 100. We can also rewrite the A over 100 in a slightly more useful form. We're just going to call that 1 one hundredth times A. Okay, great. So we have this form of our differential equation. But now we have to solve it. So this probably would take us back to some earlier material presented in an earlier chapter. And you probably learned about what are called linear first order equations. Now, to solve this, we have to kind of rewrite it in a more standard form. And so to do that, we're going to add this 1 one hundredth A to both sides of this differential equation so that it cancels on the right hand side. So far, so good. Next, we need to come up with what is called an integrating factor. And to get that, we look to the sort of coefficient of A. In this case, we have 1 one hundredth. Now, this integrating factor, which is sometimes symbolized by the Greek letter mu, is going to equal E raised to the power of that coefficient integrated with respect to time. So we're going to go ahead and integrate 1 one hundredth with respect to time. Of course, when we do that, we get 1 one hundredth t. So this is our integrating factor, and what you do is you take your differential equation and you multiply both sides of it by that integrating factor. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by this integrating factor right here. Okay, that is great. Now it turns out that the left-hand side is actually equivalent the derivative of a 
times our integrating factor with respect to time. Now this often blows students' mind, so we might want to pause and just discuss why this is actually true. For those who understand this, you may want to skip ahead, but for those who want to understand why we just repackaged the left-hand side in that manner, then let's talk about the left side as I just wrote it. So we're going to do the derivative of a and e to the 100th t. Notice to do that, we'd have to use the product rule because we have the product of a and e to the 100th t. Now the product rule tells us to take our first function a and then multiply it by the derivative of the second function. The derivative of e to the 100th t would be e to the 100th t times the derivative of 1 100th t, which is 1 over 100. And then continuing the product rule, we have plus the second function, e to the 100th t, times the derivative of the first function, which would be dA dt. Now, if you factor out an e to the 100th t from the first, and the second term, we'll do that, factor out that e to the 100th t, notice you would be left with a times 1 100th plus dA dt. Now, compare that result for the derivative with this result right here. And you might want to pause the video and notice that they are identical. So hopefully this illustrates that the left-hand side can indeed be rewritten, repackaged in the form as the derivative of a times our integrating factor with respect to time. Now, we're going to simply integrate both sides, essentially. On the left side, the integration or the antiderivative cancels with the derivative with respect to time. So you are simply left with a times e to the 1 100th t and this is equal on the other side. Now to integrate this expression, we can factor out the 10. This leaves us with the integral of e to the 100th t, technically with respect to time. Now hopefully you remember how to integrate this function. It's quite simple. You basically recopy it. So you're gonna have 10 times e to the 100th t, and then you multiply by the reciprocal of 1 100th. The reciprocal of 1 100th is 100. So you'd multiply that by 100, and then you have to add a constant of integration. We are getting there. To simplify the right-hand side, we can multiply 10 by 100 to make 1,000. Okay, we're really close to solving for a, or a of t, which was our whole objective to begin with. Now, there's a neat little trick at this point that you can do to solve for a. There is more than one way to do this, of course, but this is kind of my preferred way to solve for a. You come in here and you multiply every term by e to the negative 1 100th t. Now we're going to explore why we do this times e to the negative 1 100th t in just a moment. Let's just write them all out. And if you look at the term on the left hand side, recall that when you multiply e to the 100th t and e to the negative 100th t, you would add these exponents. Well, if you add 1 100th t to negative 1 100th t, you get 0. So you get e to the zero right here in the highlighted stuff, but e to the zero is just one. So basically you have a times one, which is just our a, also known as a of t. On the other side, look very carefully right there. Same idea, you're gonna add those, you'll get e to the zero, which is one, and a thousand times one is a thousand. And then over here we have plus the constant of integration times e to the negative one one hundredth t. We are almost done solving this problem. We just need to figure out the constant of integration. To do that, we need some initial condition. Now, in the question, we assume that at time zero, there are zero pounds of salt in that solution. It started out, I think, as pure water. So there's zero pounds of salt. So basically, we're going to plug zero in for the amount of salt, and then we're going to also plug in zero for the time. Now over here, when you plug zero in up for t, you're gonna have negative one one hundredth times zero, which is just zero. E to the zero is one, and c times one is c. So now we can very easily subtract a thousand from both sides and determine that c is negative one thousand. So now we take this result and simply rewrite it, but we're going to plug negative a thousand in for c. So you're actually going to have plus negative 1,000, so just minus 1,000, and then e to the negative 1 over 100t. 
That is the final solution to the differential equation under the given conditions. And it's neat because if you wanted to find how many pounds of salt you had at any particular time, you could just plug that time in and you would be able to do so.